number one, what is, how does it feel to be a Kennedy helping Donald Trump return to the White House? And have you talked to any of your family? Well, I had a lot of family here. So there was a, there was a lot of family that worked on the campaign, and they were here. So we had about 18 people here at the Mar-a-Lago dinner last night, and they're very happy. I'm sure there are members of my family that aren't that happy, but I've received a lot of congratulations from them, too. From some of the supporters of Vice President Harris, yeah. you've received messages from. Yeah. For you, what have your conversations been like with Donald Trump? He has said, Donald Trump has said that he would put you in charge of the public health agencies. What exactly does that look like? Well, he's been very specific in what he said. He wants me to do three things. One, clean up the corruption of the agencies, particularly the conflicts of interest that have turned those agencies into captive agencies for the pharmaceutical industry and the other the food industry, the other industries that they're supposed to be regulating. Number two, to return those agencies to the gold standard science, the empirically based, evidence-based medicine that they were famous for when I was a kid. And number three, to make America healthy again, to end the chronic disease epidemic. And President Trump has told me that he wants to see measurable concrete results within two years in, in terms of a, a measurable diminishment in child chronic disease among America's kids. So is that specific role to be the Secretary of Health? I don't know. We have not decided yet what my official role is going to be. It'll what did be, you tell him you would like that role to be? That's why I, well, I didn't tell him. I've told them that I want to think about it. So in that capacity, though, you feel confident that you have given, been given the assurance that you would be able to have an actual role in the administration that would allow you to make those sorts of decisions? Yeah, absolutely. He's asked me to do that. He's, you know, President Trump is very committed to this issue. And he was committed to it before I came on board. In fact, he called me in 2016, 21, and he wanted to do something like this back then. And for a variety of reasons, we ended up not doing it. But as far back as June of this year, he was doing tweets that looked like I had written them, you know, talking about chronic disease and the necessity, how debilitating it is for our country. When my uncle was president, 6% of our kids had chronic disease. Today, it's 60%. When my uncle was president, 3% three, three of Americans were obese. Today, it's about 70% obese or overweight. In other countries that don't have all these poisonous foods, like Japan, it's still 3%. And when my uncle was president, I was a 10-year-old boy. We spend zero on chronic disease in this country. Today, we spend $4.3 So it's five times our military budget. It's existential for our country. 77% of American kids cannot qualify for military service because of chronic disease diagnosis. We have to put an end to this. Would you like to be nominated to be the Secretary of Health and Human Services? Like I said, I don't know if that's the post that I want. I may be more effective in the, in the White House as a health czar or something like that, but we don't know. We haven't... The, the, we haven't decided we're meeting today on these issues. Would that be ideally looking over the 13 health agencies that fall under HHS? Well, I, yeah, that would be one way to do it. There's other ways to do it, too. You said you're meeting with now President-elect Donald Trump here this afternoon. Uh, I'm meeting with his team, with his senior team today. What is your plan these next three months? Um, I plan to spend a lot of time in Palm Beach over the next three months meeting with the team putting together, we have a 30-day plan, we have a 60-day plan, and we have a 190-day plan. There are things that we want to get done very quickly. Have you been given assurance that you would have a staff even? Yeah, I will. I, and I don't want to talk about specifics about what the administration Well, then what, has. What, what is your plan come day one? What is at the top of your list that you want to make sure you, with the power, you've watched a lot of administrations over the course of the last several decades. What do you want come January 2025 to do? Uh, I'm going to do things that clean up the corruption in the agency. That's the real, you know, we have a thousand ingredients in our food that are illegal in Europe, that are illegal in other countries, and they're making our kids sick. So does that mean seeking like they lawsuits? Are there, they are there because of corruption in our agencies. Does that and mean using the agencies to ban those products in There's US a lot of supply? different ways to do it. 
and I've talked very extensively about that on podcasts, et cetera. So you'd potentially seek to, what, to do that. What my job is not to do as little top-down control as possible and just get good information to the American people. So we don't have good science because the agencies deliberately don't do that science because they don't want people to know what they're eating. And what I'm going to do is make sure that Americans have good information, good, the best gold standard science about their food and medicines, and then leave the choice to them. You have been a crusader on questioning vaccines. Are there specific vaccines that you would seek to take off the market? Oh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to take away anybody's vaccines. I, and I've never been an anti-vaccine. I've just you will said, not. You will not take any vaccine that is currently on the market. I'm not. If somebody, if vaccines are working for somebody, I'm not going to take them away. People ought to have choice, and that choice ought to be informed by the best information. So I'm going to make sure the scientific safety studies and efficacies are out there, and people can make individual assessments about whether that product is going to be good for them. Would that include COVID vaccines that are currently on the market? I, I want the best science for every vaccine. It is part of that. In, during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, you were questioning the FDA and calling them out for uh, uh, approving the emergency authorization of the COVID vaccines. If you had been in charge of the FDA at that time, would you have blocked the authorization of the COVID vaccines? What like you I, were suggesting publicly. What I was saying at that time, is the vaccines are not going to prevent transmission, which they were telling the public that they would. They were saying, you need to take this vaccine in order to protect grandma. I knew in May of 2020 that the vaccines were not going to protect against transmission because I was actually reading the monkey studies. Then. But you would not have told you, the FDA. Here's what you would I, not have told the FDA here's what to I block the authorization. Of the I would have vaccine. been honest with the American people. And so you oh. wouldn't have blocked it. I would have I would have been honest with the American people now. So you wouldn't have you wouldn't have blocked it. I wouldn't have directly blocked it. I would have made sure that we had the best science, and there was no effort to do that at that time. And if there was another pandemic that were to strike, why should the American public have confidence that you would allow a vaccine to be made available through the market, even if it's on well, a I mean, let me point this is, out that they should not have confidence in the people who are managing our pandemic. We had the worst record of any country in the world. So we had 16% of the COVID deaths in the United States of America. We only had 4.2% of the globe's population. So whatever we were doing in this country was the worst of every country in the world. So in order to do that, you say clearing out the corruption in your terms, would that mean clearing out the top level federal service workers that are currently at the FDA and the CDC? In some categories, I would say. What does that look like? Yeah. In some categories of workers, there are entire departments like the nutrition departments at FDA that are that have to go, um, that are are not doing their job. They're not protecting our kids. Why do we have Fruit Loops in this country that have 18 or 19 ingredients, and you go to Canada and it's got two or three? Would you eliminate any of the agencies? Uh, I'm, 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 I. To eliminate the agencies, as long as it requires congressional approval, I wouldn't be doing that. And I can get the corruption out of the agencies. This is what I've been doing for 40 years. I've sued all those agencies. I have a PhD in corporate corruption, and that's what I do. And once they're not corrupt, once Americans are getting good science and are allowed to make their own choices, they're going to get a lot healthier. You've also talked about fluoride in the U.S. water supply. You would seek to ban fluoride in the U.S. water supply? Well, I would advise the water districts that are currently using it that there, there's a lot of new science out there. In fact, there's a federal judge decision by an Obama-appointed judge on October 4th of this year in which he sent EPA back to the drawing board and said, you've never done the safety studies on this. And by the way... And so what does that look like without debating, without knowing, without going back and forth on the science? Way, and what it it's shows lowering here. IQ in, in our children. What would you, what would you, it's on January 2025, we're three months away here, what would you actually do uh, in I your position Florida inside of the White House? I think is on its way out. Anyway, and how do you make that happen? This is your chance, so, is what you're suggesting to me. Yeah. How would you I, make that well, happen? Listen to what I'm saying, okay, and then I'll tell you. Okay. I think Florida is on the way out because of that court decision. I think the faster that it goes out, the better. I'm not going to compel anybody to take it out, but I'm going to advise the water districts. 
about their legal liability, their legal obligation to their service zones and to their constituents. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to give them good information about the science. And I think that, that fluoride will disappear. What did Donald Trump tell you when you guys were having conversations while you were still an independent presidential candidate? It was a major endorsement when you dropped out of the race and backed his candidacy. What was that conversation like? Uh, it was a number of conversations. Essentially, he said to me, let's unify our parties because the landscapes on which we agree are much larger than those issues on, on which we disagree and we'll continue to disagree on those. In ending the addiction to foreign wars, we both want to do that. Ending the surveillance, the censorship, you know, the media collusion and that censorship, we want to end that. And then making Americans healthy again. And those are three big issues and for me, and we agree 100% on those issues, so let's do it. What was it like to be a Kennedy at a Republican victory party for president last night? Very unusual. I never thought I'd be there. Finally here. Over the course of the next three months, is there any assurance, you know, we have seen this is going to be our second Donald Trump administration, and there was a lot of folks that came into his first White House who came in with what they said were good intentions. Donald Trump ultimately cast them aside, fired them, let them go from the administration. What gives you confidence that Donald Trump is going to be loyal to you and your mission come 2025? Well, President Trump said to me on, on several occasions, we've talked about what happened in 2016. And he said, I got there and I wasn't able to, I, I was not prepared to govern it. I was surrounded by corporate lobbyists and corporate CEOs. And they said, appoint that guy, appoint this guy, appoint that guy. And he said, I appointed a lot of bad people. And in fact, it, there was probably a higher turnover on his cabinet in the first year or two years than any other cabinet in history because he was realizing he appointed a lot of bad people. He said, this time I'm concerned about my legacy. I only have four years. I want to leave America better. And the key to that for me is to ending the chronic disease epidemic, and I want you to do it. So that is uh, that was an offer I couldn't refuse. How much of a role do you think you played in his victory last night? How much of a role did he say you had in his victory? I have not had that conversation with President Trump, and the victory belongs to him, not to me. Finally. Any other specific health care policy that you will seek to implement in this role that you will have come January 2025 that we should be asking you about now? I'm not going to talk about specifics. Anything else? Oh. Guys? Hmm? Okay, one more because he said it. Liquid gold. We've been listening to Donald Trump's speeches there, and he says he'll let you do whatever when it comes to health care policy and vaccines. He said the one thing you can't touch, in his words, was liquid gold with gasoline. What have you told him in response, and was that part of the agreement? No, you know, I understand that that's a big commitment that he's made to his constituents, that he wants to make America energy independent, which, so do, which I do too. And there are arguments for which he's made right now. The United States is the best regulation of oil drilling. There's still a lot of deficits, and fracking gets into people's waters, etc., we have the best regulation probably of any country in the world. And when and and we now have oil drilling going into the Amazon and absolutely devastating it. I've also talked to the president about this, that if you're worried about carbon, and for millions of Americans who are and see climate change as existential, the most important thing you can do about carbon is to fix our soils to do regenerative agriculture. If we did regenerative agriculture on America's soils, we could absorb 100% of the, of the carbon and get us down to pre-industrial levels. Oh, it's, more, it's better than anything that we can do, and that's part of the, the role that I hope to play in government. Last, last thing. Any other names or of allies of yours no. that you are recommending for HHS secretary or other FDA nope. or CDC? I'm talking about You've it. You've got it in your head, and we'll follow up with it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I Thanks. appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.